The idea of growing your own food may not make you think about a laboratory where animal cells are transformed into what is being called cultured meat, petri dish dinners. But this is becoming reality. Last month, the city-state of Singapore granted approval to one American startup to sell the fruit of its laboratories in restaurants there. The company says it is safe for human consumption and argues that it's a kinder alternative to killing animals and that it's also better for the environment. A new option, it says, for people who are not interested in vegetarianism. Well, we can speak now to investigative journalist and author of a book on the issue of technology and how it may make our lives very different in the very, very near future. That book called Sex, Robots and Vegan Meat. Our guest today is Miss Jenny Kleeman. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, Can I start by asking you, when you wrote your book, uh, our labs were just growing meat, but uh, just last month we've now had that approval for restaurants in Singapore. What's your gut reaction to that news? Gut reaction is a good word for it because actually I ate the uh, the chicken nugget that was approved in Singapore uh, during the research for my book, and my gut reaction to eating it w- was not a very positive one. Um, I I think it's a fantastic technological innovation. It's great for science. Um, uh, it's a bit strange that it's been that an American company is seeking approval in Singapore rather than waiting for the FDA to be prepared to approve its products um, in America. Um, I think it's a little bit rushed because there's a competition between all of these different startups to be first, to be first to get approval, to be first to put the product on sale. It's a remarkable technological feat. Um, but the people who are making this meat grown in laboratories say that they're doing it to save the planet from the damage caused by industrial agriculture and the overconsumption of meat around the world as populations grow, the ecological damage caused by intensive agriculture. Uh, And I would say that whilst this is a very impressive feat scientifically, we could solve this problem by just eating a little bit, little bit less meat. So um, I think this innovation is kind of the ultimate in overshoot engineering. Uh, Why grow meat in labs when we can just change our diets a little bit? Indeed, in your book, you do look at that human reaction to we like shiny new things rather than necessarily changing or behavior. And I imagine at this point, given that it's quite a niche market, the amount of energy needed to produce this kind of meat is quite high. I mean, is it actually better, do you think, for the environment overall? At the moment, it's being grown on a very, very small scale. And uh, in fact, in many ways, this uh, getting approval and putting it on market is it, putting it on the market is a, a proof of concept still. It's to prove to investors that it's possible to get it approved, uh, that it's possible to, to get people to part with their money for it. What they need is more investment so they can build giant bioreactors and do it in a more um, cost-effective way. The jury is out on whether or not it uses uh, more or less energy than intensive agriculture. But, you know, we all know that particularly beef farming, produces an enormous amount of carbon. It's terrible when it comes to antibiotic resistance. The vast majority of all the antibiotics in the world are not even given to humans. They're given to animals who aren't even sick in China and the USA to stop them uh, from being sick when they're crammed together so closely. Uh, You know, there's a lot of water wastage. There's land wastage. There are all sorts of ecological problems caused by industrial, industrial agriculture. And I think when we're talking about beef farming, certainly, Um, this will be better for the environment. When it comes to things like chicken, maybe less so. Chicken is less damaging for the environment than beef beef and pork and lamb. Indeed, it sounds like definitely the way farming is done is a big question. But uh, of course, what everybody will also want to know is, do you think it's safe, this form of meat? I personally think it is safe. Uh, it, well, it depends what you think about processed food, but I, I think it is safe because it is literally the way this meat is made is a biopsy is taken from a living animal, a biopsy of cells, uh, which is then put into a nutrient bath, which causes the cells to divide and the cells grow exponentially and are then harvested and then eaten. And if the laboratory is well run, there's no reason to believe that it isn't safe. I know a lot of people will instinctively be revolted by the process, the idea of a flesh grown in a human laboratory. But, you know, cells have been cultivated this way for many years in in medical science quite safely. So I don't think I don't think the issue is necessarily one of safety. I think the issue is one of need. Do we really need to be going to all this trouble? And, And perhaps the biggest concern for me is that in the future that a lot of the people who are growing this meat are working towards this ideal future where we all still eat meat, but we no longer kill animals for it. 
we're all going to be increasingly dependent on very remote corporations with highly specialized technology to produce our meat. Uh, whereas now you, anyone can keep their own chickens and, and, and raise their own animals all over the world. And, and that worries me. I think that the more that we are removed from the source of our meat, um, the more, the more be we become dependent on others. And also we, we have to trust um, big companies who ultimately might not have the welfare of animal, animals or our welfare at heart. Indeed, food security, a big question. And, you know, for many years we have been looking at this idea of farm to fork and uh, consuming more and more local. There's also a question I'm thinking of, of the people currently involved in farming. A lot of the poorer in the world work in agriculture as well today. Do you see uh, this new form of producing meat? Could it have an, uh, an impact on them, a significant impact on them? Well, it depends how far in the future we are looking at. Ultimately, we could be living in a world where there is a moral superiority from eating this kind of meat that doesn't come from killing an animal. And in poorer countries where they can't afford this product, um, they could be viewed as you know, barbaric for continuing to kill animals to produce um, their meat. At the moment, this is a very expensive, very elite product. The um, product that was approved in Singapore and went on sale in Singapore went on sale in a private members club in Singapore at, at, at a very high price. The cost is going to come down. I think a lot of the people who are making this product at the moment hope that it will be price competitive and taste competitive uh, with meat in due course. But I think we're a long way off that. And when you look at the infrastructure that will be involved in producing this meat and distributing it, it's going to be very unequal. And, and it's going to allow people in wealthier countries um, to, to be able to eat meat with a, a cleaner conscience. Uh, finally, you looked at the issue of security when it comes to handing over uh, more and more to technology and big companies. But, you know, your book, of course, looks at a range of other areas where we do that. What's your overall fear of the addition of more and more technology to our lives? I think that technology always comes with unintended consequences that even the, the most uh, visionary thinkers cannot foresee. And we have to ask whether or not in, in asking technology to solve fundamental human problems that we could solve by changing our behavior, we are in fact disempowering ourselves. Technology doesn't solve the problem, it circumvents the problem. The problem we have at the moment is overconsumption, it's human appetite, it's the fact that we think it's totally normal to eat meat twice a day, whereas in the past we might have eaten it once or twice a week. And so technology is telling us you can have your cake and eat it, you can have your steak and eat it, uh, you can continue uh, being as greedy as ever before and, and we'll just provide a solution for you. And I think human beings are better than that. I think we're capable of change. And if we change our behavior rather than relying on technology, we won't fall victim to those unintended consequences of technology, which we might not want at all. OK, it sounds like it is time to think ahead. Miss Jenny Kleeman, thanks so much for taking time out to bring us your expertise here on France 24. Jenny Kleeman there, author of Sex Robots and Vegan Meat, telling us, uh, giving us her perspective on that new lab-grown meat that has just been validated in Singapore. You're watching live from Paris here on France 24. If you're just joining us, these are our top stories. U.S. lawmakers prepared to vote on the second impeachment of Donald Trump as he dismisses any responsibility for the violence at Capitol. Mike Pence has already rejected the idea of ousting Trump from office before the end of his term. Over 350 people on trial in Italy in the largest anti-mafia trial there in three decades. Those accused face charges that range from money laundering to murder.